G'day guys. So today I've been playing around with the mid journey image generator and it's created some really cool chair concepts. I think this is going to be an awesome tool for designers um, in the future to come up with concepts quickly and come up with some ones that I probably would never have thought of before, like this one right here. Um, Today, I'm going to be using one of these references, this one over here, to create a render in Blender. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to add a image as a reference. To get the dimensions of our chair, we're going to need a reference. So I'm going to create a cube. And I'll change the dimensions to 600 by 600, 450 high being the seat height. I'm going to duplicate this cube here. And this will be the back. We're going to make 90 and 750 high for the backrest. A wired box. Awesome. Let's make another cube and we're going to start building the legs. Scale it down, move it to the side. Let's get our reference. Make it 33 thick and 120 I'm going to go into x-ray mode So now that we have this first leg made, I'm going to apply the scale and then duplicate this, rotate it by holding control for increments. Edit mode. And then we're going to lock it on the Z axis and move it all the way to the top. Now let's duplicate this. This will be our rear left leg. And duplicate this guy. Now let's make the seat. Let's duplicate the leg. Go into edit mode.
The proportions are looking a little bit off. Let's bring this in just slightly. Looking at our reference. Might bring up the backrests just slightly. Now to build the support rail again, just shift D to duplicate the object, going tab into edit mode. Looking good. Now let's make the backrest. Let's duplicate this leg support. Alt Z to go into X ray mode. Oh, about right. Now we're going to go into edit mode and hit Control R, which is going to allow us to make a number of loop cuts. Okay. And to create the curve in the backrest, I'm going to add a bend modifier or a simple deform modifier. There it is. The origin, the object. Ah, uh, so we need to set the origin here to the object. So I'll go object, set origin, origin to geometry. Uh, and we'll change this to bend. Go. And I think let's go negative six point five. We're going to apply this. So now let's straighten the back. So. I'm going to go into x-ray mode, select all the points and hit scale S on the Y axis and then hit zero. You know, align all of those rear points, do the same for the sides. This time on the X axis, 
zero. Now looking at our reference, this backrest is almost floating in midair. We might want to create something that is a bit more realistic for its construction. So might rotate this five degrees. Move it so it's in line. I think something like that would be a bit more realistic. And we will straighten out this top edge. The other interesting detail on this chair is this leg is almost poking through the seat. Let's try and create that detail. Control R for a loop cut. GG is to, we can now slide this. And I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna create another loop cut here in the middle. I'm going to hit slash to isolate the object. And go to face select mode. Delete the faces, go to edge select mode, hit fill. and F for fill. Hit slash. Ooh. Now in this seat, it's currently a square. So what we wanna do is create this, let this leg sort of slot into the seat. So to do that, I'll create a Boolean modifier. Let's hide this and there you go. So the next step is to add a texture to this. And I think a really good resource is to use Quixel Bridge. All of these resources are free if you sign in with a Epic Games account. So I'm just going to type in T 
timber, plywood. Hmm. Or let's go wood, veneer. Board. And we're going to export this to Blender. Let's go to the shading tab. Select our object. There we have it. What we can do now is select all your objects and then the leg last, hit Control L and we're gonna link materials. Now by default, when Quixel uses its plugin to directly import the material, it basically plugs these nodes into the wrong socket. So I'm gonna change the gloss here to roughness. The specular is going to go into the specular and the normal into the normal. And I'm gonna add a color ramp node to search for it. Yeah, this is gonna give us more control over the gloss and reflections, which is really important to get a realistic looking timber finish. Now let's UV unwrap this model. Go to the UV editor. Now, make sure that we've applied our scale first. Go into edit mode. What we can do is we can hit shift G and we can select similar by sharpness or select similar by face angles, right click and mark scene. Now I'm gonna hit A to select all and U to unwrap. Now we have more control over our UVs over here on the left hand side. I'm gonna make sure that the albedo image is loaded in here so that we can get a bit of an understanding of where everything is positioned on the texture. So firstly, I'm gonna go into this mode here, which allows us to select UV islands. Rotate this. Now let's do the base. Let's actually create four loop cuts. 
this is going to give us the look like they're made out of timber planks because realistically you're not going to get a slab of timber this big it's most likely going to be laminated together from multiple pieces so let's go shift g mark seam a select all u and then let's unwrap You can see I'm aligning the UVs to the planks in the texture. Rotate these slightly. Awesome. Now I'm going to repeat this process for the rest of the model. In the next video, we'll be creating the fun part, which includes lighting, cameras, and animation. See you soon. <laughs>